YouTube, welcome to Plan Build Play. In this video I'm going to be testing out this PowerBright 2.2 uh, kilowatts inverter, as well as going over some of the features with the Rutergy Wanderer uh, charge controller, as well as the uh, Bluetooth module for it. In another video I quickly went over how to set up this charge controller, as well as an inverter, just to test it out. Uh, here I'll show how it, it's, I've been using it for the last couple months. I have solar lines coming in from, or I have power lines coming in from the solar panels, and then these go down to a, a fuse block, and then back up to the charge controller, which is this line here, and then they come out to the the batteries. Again, going through a, a fuse, and then directly over to the inverter. From here, it goes to the batteries, and those also have fuse blocks installed. And then each battery has a six gauge line to it, and then it splits out to the 12 batteries per, uh, per battery bank. And I have three battery banks installed, so 36 batteries total. This isn't something you'd normally use for a 400 watt solar panel, but eventually I'm going to be installing more panels and then switching the batteries over to use a larger inverter as well. And this will be a 48 volt inverter. I'll set up a separate video for that in the future. For this, I'm mostly going to be testing out the charge controller and showing out the showing what the inverter can handle. A couple other features I also added for the charge controller are the temperature sensor as well as the Bluetooth module. So the temperature sensor will change the charge controller based on uh, the, th the temperature of the batteries. And then the Bluetooth module will give you some information about uh, how much power you're producing, your battery charge level, and things like that. And here you can see all that information in the Bluetooth app. So right now it's a bit of a cloudy day, so I'm only getting about 50 watts of uh, power coming in from the panels. Uh, right now it shows the batteries are charged at 95%, but that's really just because uh, that they're charging and that's showing the panel voltage rather than the batteries. If they weren't charging this would show you what you have left in your batteries after the uh, after they stop charging for the day. Alright so once you get everything wired up here's the uh, Bluetooth app for the Renogy uh, Bluetooth module. To connect it you just hit the add device button and the devices should show up. takes a second to, uh, to load the data from the, the module. And here's the, uh, the current status of your, your solar system. So it's a bit late in the day, so I'm only getting about three watts of power from my 400 watts of uh, panels. But uh, here it shows your, your voltages, your amps, your watts from the panels, as well as the, uh, the voltage, the current, and the temperature for your uh, your batteries. So I'm not using the the load side of the uh, of the charger, but here you can turn that on and off, and it'll also show the voltage, current, and wattage for that as well. So one of the other nice features is it will show what you produced for the for the day, as well as your totals for uh, the lifetime of the the charger. So I've been running for this for about two months, or 65 days, and I've gotten a total of uh, just under 65 kilowatt hours of charging. And that's again from a 400 watt solar panel. <clears throat> and here it shows what you've got for the day. So I've got the maximum charge of 262 watts uh, peak power, and a total of uh, just under a kilowatt for the day. And then if you go back in your record, it'll show you our, uh, what you've got for the last, well, since you installed the system. It takes a little while to update sometimes, but uh, it'll show you all the information it has available. Also shows your, your max water, or max charge for each day, as well as your, your battery voltages. 
shows your uptime. It'll even show some charts on uh, what you've generated for the day. So some cloudy days, obviously you're not going to get as much power, but uh, most days I get about about a kilowatt or, or even more. Alright, so next up I'm going to be testing out the inverter and see how much this can, uh, and see what this can power. So to test out the inverter I'm going to be using this AC power meter as well as the DC power meter. Uh, this will show the the difference between the two, and that will show the the efficiency of how much the inverter is actually using. So let me get those wired in and start testing this out. All right, so now I have everything wired up and ready to test. Uh, you can see here, without anything running off the inverter, it's using about eight watts. And then turning on the power strips. They use a couple of watts, about three. Of a small LED light. You can see this is using about almost 10 watts for the light. And on the power inverter, it's using 27 watts. So it looks like the inverter is using about 17 watts now. All right, and then turning on a space heater. So now using about 1300 watts here, and the inverter is using 1.54 kilowatts. So it's using about 200 watts for the inverter. Right, and turning on the heat gun, using about 1700 watts, 1800, and 2.2 uh, kilowatts for the inverter. So this should be rated for 2200 watts continuous, but it looks like it only got to about 1800 before it started overheating or overloading. Let's try that again. Here's with the space heater. 1300, 1400 watts. And this time I'm going to use some uh, heat lamps. Alright, so looks like this can only handle about 1800 watts continuous. Uh, it will allow spikes for uh, for like motors and things like that for a short time, but um, it definitely won't hold the 2200 watts continuous. I will say it has been working pretty well for the last couple months with just light duty use, uh, just for some, some tools in the workshop. But if you're looking to power anything a little higher powered, you might want to get a larger inverter than this. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.